This week on TGC News, Nosler swings at the 338, a camo company sues a magazine, and a well-rounded AR on this week's Not A Review. The Connect QD M-Lock mounts from Kinetic Development Group offer the fastest and simplest way to get your M-Lock attachments securely fastened to your gun. Available in five different flavors, including three and seven slot Picatinny, 45 degree offset, and more. You can bet that they're gonna have what you need. And guys, you know the drill. To get 10% off your entire order, use the code TGC10 at KineticDG.com. Welcome back to the Only Gun News Show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton, and this week's first story is about a company out of Oregon called Nosler. For those of you that are unaware, Nosler lives and breathes high-quality ammo. They've built their name on both precision ammo as well as really good hunting ammo. The question one might ask is, how does an ammunition company stake its claim in the market and really drive home the point that they are here to stay? Well, sometimes the answer to that is to create or standardize a cartridge with the company name in it. For instance, we're all familiar with 223 Remington, 308 Winchester, and even the 300 AAC Blackout. This is right in line with those. Almost. <laughs> Nosler has taken that idea to heart, and over the last few years has introduced such calibers as 26 Nosler back in 2014, followed by the 28 and 30 Nosler cartridges, and now they've introduced the 33 Nosler, which is said to have the same power as a 338 Lapua, but fit into a standard long-action rifle, which would significantly improve the affordability and weight of the rifles chambered for that round. And oddly enough, all of these cartridges use the 404 Jeffrey as a parent case. I think the guys at Nosler are a little bit obsessed with that one. My point in telling you all this is not to say whether these cartridges are or are not cool or useful, because they all, on the surface at least, sound awesome. The problem I have with some of these quote-unquote mainstream Wildcat cartridges is that the companies that develop them are often the only ones that make the ammo, let alone chamber guns, for the actual round. And what does that mean for the rest of us? Well, essentially, that sh is going to be way too expensive to own or shoot, and therefore the cartridge will struggle to get off the ground. It's a shame too, because a lot of these new cartridges offer some incredible performance, but if you want one and can't find one locally, most of the time you're not gonna bother. And on top of that, if you can't get the ammo, why would you want to buy a gun chambered for that round? I would love to see a company like this work with a bunch of other companies to release rifles and ammo for the chambering right off the bat. And who knows? Maybe we're going to see that 33 Nosler in a bunch of different rifles at SHOT Show. But until something like that, the 33 Nosler and many other cartridges like it will not get off the ground easily. What do you guys think? How many of you would actually spend your money on a round you could only get from one company. And on hashtag not a review, the segment where I take a product and give you guys a hands-on spotlight, we're taking a closer look at the DDM4 V7 from Daniel Defense. This is one of the most well-rounded rifles on the market right now. I had the chance to spend some time with one on my recent trip to the DDHQ, so let me break down what you can expect. 16-inch hammer forged barrel with a mid-length gas system, DD stock and grip, ambi safety, flared magwell, and a solid fit and finish. Oh, and let's not forget the slim, lightweight M-Lock rail system that they just came out with this past year. This is a big improvement, in my opinion, from the previous tube on the older V7s, and it fits my meat paws comfortably, and I really like M-Lock, if you guys haven't picked up on that. So it's cool to see more companies offering ways to attach all kinds of shenanigans to your rifles. They're also offering the V7 in a lightweight and pro version with a few different odds and ends as far as barrels, triggers, etc. But the standard V7 is the core of that lineup and I think it is one of those jack of all trades type 5.56 AR-15s. Having been there and seen how these come together, keep an eye out for the DD Tour video this week, I don't feel bad about saying that at all. I get asked quite a bit about a great first AR, and something like this is not a bad choice if you can swing the cost. If you want to learn more, hit the link down in the description to head over to DanielDefense.com. To see more product spotlights just like this one, check out the Not A Review playlist on YouTube. And in magazines going the way of the dodo news, hunting slash camo clothing manufacturer QWU, yeah, say that ten times fast, QWU, <laughs> 
<laughs> Kiwu is suing Eastman Publishing for grossly misrepresenting their circulation numbers. Essentially, Kiwu paid them money, and because the numbers were fudged, the company didn't get what was promised. Now, I know this is not straight up gun news, but I think this has a ton of relevance in today's gun industry. Stick with me here. A while back, I talked about Harris Publications closing their doors, and more recently, I talked about Winchester doing an all-digital series for the first time. This all ties together with this Kiwu versus Eastman story. To understand the core of what's happening here, you have to understand how magazines typically sell advertising space. This is where this lawsuit comes into play. Most of the time, potential advertisers are presented with something called a media kit. These are typically bragging sheets with some pricing on them, and they allow potential advertisers to see and understand the value of the ads that are being offered. In this case, Eastman alleged a certain number of copies being in circulation, and according to their own U.S. Postal Service reports, that number was about 40% less than claimed. This is a big deal if the advertiser is spending thousands upon thousands of dollars in advertising with that magazine. So why does this matter? Why am I bringing this up on TGC News? Well, first of all, Getting sued over something like this means the manufacturer, in this case Kiwu, is fed up with the BS from a magazine on a big scale. Imagine what it takes to have to get to the point where they felt they need to sue the company. Secondly, in my opinion, this is another nail in the coffin of traditional print media. Insane pricing for lackluster readership and BS numbers with no way to track the results and that is not good for anyone. And when I say insane, I mean upwards of $40,000 for one full page ad in a popular magazine that might end up on the back of someone's toilet. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying all magazines are awful. Some publications have done a great job staying relevant and adapting to the digital age. For instance, Recoil Magazine. But most of the rest of them are on their way out, and as far as I'm concerned, that is a good thing. It makes way for new blood that viewers and readers actually trust. Now, be sure to stick around for a friendly fire question about guns under a Trump presidency, and let me know if you guys like this kind of behind the scenes type news. RE Factor Tactical offers a huge variety of high quality bags, pouches, apparel, training gear, and even some motivational posters. Be sure to check out their Black Friday 2017 sales starting first thing on Friday morning. Now, normally if you use the code TGC10, you'll get 10% off your order. But for Black Friday, if you use the code FIRE FOR EFFECT, you'll get more. Check that out at refactortactical.com on Black Friday 2017. This week's friendly fire question is from a bunch of you guys on Snapchat. The thing you ask the most is what do I think will happen with guns under a Trump presidency? Well, let's just say things are going to be way better than they would have been with a Clinton presidency. The reality of this situation is that Trump has released some very pro-gun statements in recent weeks, including plans for changes in carry laws nationwide and on military bases specifically. He's also said that he wants to fix the mental health system in this country, and there's a whole bunch of other things that I'm sure a lot of you have already seen. A lot of this stuff is exactly what we've all been preaching for the last eight years. This is super positive for us. But keep in mind, guys, this is not the time to rest on our laurels. This is a small victory, and we need to continue our fight for our rights and let our elected representatives know how we feel. Adam talked a bit about the process for laws to come about in the Hearing Protection Act episode of The Legal Brief that just aired last week. And while things might not happen overnight, we must stand firm. If we rest now, we will lose the fight. It is important to continue pushing. Now... My friendly fire question to you guys this week. How did you find out about the Gun Collective? This will be real interesting. Let me know down in the comments, and if you want your question answered right here on the show, you can head over to theguncollective.com, check out the friendly fire page, and send me your questions. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed this episode. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet, get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.